Hey everyone, welcome back to CP Whiskey Creek in N-Scale. In this video, we're going to have a look at Rapido Train's new N-Scale Wide Vision Caboose. The Wide Vision Caboose was built by, at least these ones, were built by CP's Angus shops in Montreal between 1972 and 1981. In Canada, we often refer to a caboose as a van, so hence the nickname that they acquired of the Angus van. Now, these were the last caboose or vans ever made for CP Rail. Um, 1987 is when the Canadian Transportation Commission authorized both CN and CP to operate trains without a caboose. And at that time, CP had approximately 700 vans on the system. By 2017, it was down to about 30. Most of those are being used as maintenance away and shoving platforms on a few subdivisions. A few were able to be saved from the scrapyard and you'll see them in museums and some of the historic and tourist railroads will still have an operating caboose. But really after 1987, they just started disappearing and most of them ended up in the, the scrap heaps. So you're probably thinking to yourself, what am I doing with a caboose since I model modern era? Well, for starters, they're cool. And there's something special, almost romantic about a caboose and railroading. So I had to take the opportunity when they came out and Rapido released these to pre-order a few of them. I know some people don't like the whole pre-ordering system, but especially as a Go Transit modeler, I've learned my lesson from assuming that something will be available later on and then you can never find them again. So when these things come up for pre-order, then I got to jump on them. So what I ended up getting is I got two of them, as you see here, and one of them being for THB and then the other one being for CP Rail. Now, from my understanding, these are sold out at Rapido and there are still some that are kicking around at various retailers. So if you haven't already jumped on these, then I would suggest doing so pretty quick. So starting off with the CP Rail one, this one was built in 1977. Well, not this one. This one was just recently built. But this the model that this represents was built in 1977. And it's actually still alive, kind of. So as of 2017, I haven't gotten any updated or seen read anything updated about it. But as of 2017, it was being held somewhere for a future display in BC. So it's slated for donation somewhere in BC, possibly in Vancouver. So it's still, it's in rough shape. The last picture that I saw of it, but um, it's at least still around. Now, as for my THB one, this one is already been scrapped. So this was originally built in 1973 for the THB. They only got a couple of them and uh, the THB itself uh, ended in 87. So, and that's when it was completely absorbed into the CP network. So they only ordered a, a few of these in the 80 series. And so I got number 82 here and this one ended up being scrapped in 1991. So let's have a look inside of these. I don't know why there's so much garbage on here, but anyways, uh, teach and be one. I mean, we'll open this one up first. Repeater trains definitely didn't cheap out on the packaging. I've seen some people's review videos lately and the packaging from some of the manufacturers is almost flimsy, like they're getting it from the dollar store, but nice plastic uh, shells to protect everything in transit. And then another protective uh, plastic here to keep everything in place. So, oh, there's like a little wand here. You can tell I totally did research about what I bought. So we'll, uh, hopefully the camera will focus in on this, but the detail on these is, especially for end scale, is very cool like you're getting a number even up on the, the cupola the detailing for the storm doors 
this is an absolutely immaculate model. Rapido, who is very well known for their underbody detail. I mean, personally, I, I'm not sure how much is necessary on an end scale, but needless to say, it is uh, very, very nice under, underneath. Now, one thing I'm already noticing is as this thing's moving around, it's almost like it's running into some of the hosing underneath there. So I don't know if that's going to cause any issues if you're going around tight curves. Hmm. Because it's on basically both sides. So hopefully I'll have time to get it onto the track and see how that goes. But the inside of this and outside is absolutely stunning. I wonder what this thing does. I mean, I could probably read the instruction manual, but who's got time for that? Oh, and I found the instruction manual, which probably explains how I can do stuff with this. So, so it does actually even mention here um, about a minimum radius for the uh, for the model, so I wonder if that's going to have a, have an impact. So I give you a little bit of history about um, basically all the stuff that I kind of told you. So I mean, you can skip the first part of the video and just read the instruction manual, and uh, you'll get all the uh, all the details apparently here. Oh, it does have working lights, working in. Uh, oh, so I need to pull off the couple and probably pull out a thing for the battery sweet we're totally doing that let's see how easy this is i really don't want to break this well this is fun um it's secured to the body by clips on the sides of the caboose. Note that there will be wires connected to the battery holder, not shown in the diagram, so exercise caution when removing. No kidding. So it would be nice to know where these clips are. Oh, something's coming loose. And hopefully not things that I don't want to come loose. All right, hang on. So after a little bit of fighting with this, I don't know if I did it right. So you can see actually where some of these clips are and it's kind of confusing, I would say, because it says it's secured to the body by clips on the sides. So I guess that's not, I don't consider those the sides. So that's actually where the clips are. So hopefully that's focusing. Um, Cause I was expecting the clips actually be here, but I don't see anything in this area here that it's actually clipping onto. So these are actually where your clips are. Interesting. So in theory, this guy should come out. Oh. There's not even batteries here. Is there supposed to be batteries? Hmm. Hang on. Uh, I'm not really sure if there's supposed to be batteries in there. And I'm kind of looking at the instruction manual. And I don't see what battery you're supposed to. I kind of skimmed over and I thought it was something like that, but that's actually their phone number to say, uh, to call them. But I don't see, this is all en français. So I'm not sure what battery you're supposed to toss in these things. And I don't see anything written here. And it doesn't look like they fell out. So I think uh, for my purposes, I won't be having a battery in there. I don't even know if this thing's going to go back together. Uh, 
I'll be back. So just as I'm finishing this up, what I ended up doing is actually putting in one side and then using, uh, apparently I'm painting a pilot for another modeling project, but I needed a toothpick. So pilots help them out and just sort of pushing down to try to get that tab to drop in there. So I think, oh. I'm gonna completely destroy the really nice underbody here. Oh, there we go. So that was a lot more work than I really anticipated. So I don't think mine's ever gonna get lit up because I don't wanna ever go through that ever again to open it. It's kind of a cool idea, don't get me wrong, but it's uh, kind of also a pain in the rear end to, uh, to access. So especially since I have no idea what even battery to put in there, I'm kind of already over it. But going back to the actual model itself, the model itself is overall like a superb design. Um, the underbody did survive all my uh, manhandling of it. You do have uh, body mount couplers on it. And uh, the trucks look super nice. So yeah, overall, like, don't get me wrong, like with all those struggles, if you're looking to have it lit up, then you're going to... Be very very careful because especially in scale it's very small very finicky um i can see some of these uh exhausts getting broken off in the process of people trying to fight with that so i don't know if there is maybe a better way to attach that i'm not sure but overall it's a, a great little model i'm not overly concerned about having it lit up or not um that sounds like a tomorrow problem or a never problem so so i also popped open the cp1 again just like the thmb one that we saw it's beautifully detailed lots of underbody detail to it they are really 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 nice looking models so i don't have necessarily a lot of time but we're going to have to put these guys, at least one of them, on the track. So let's head on over there. All right, so it still looks amazing on the track here. It was easy to put on. And has pretty good roll to it. I think even better than uh, their GP20 tank cars. Great little model here. So I'm very happy that I ordered the ones that I ordered because like I said, they're not gonna last long. And yeah, so to have this one and the THMB one, I don't know how often I'll actually run them, but the fact that I have them for cool little run buys and things like that, very, very happy with that. So if you haven't got yours, better reach out and grab yours as soon as you can because just like the actual real life ones, they're not going to be around for a long time. Thanks for watching.